Good morning and welcome to the Elevate Renata's team call. This is your host, Keely Austin. Today is it's August 4th, 4th and it's Takeoff Tuesday. Today we've got a phenomenal trainer. I always love what Bill has to share with us. He is incredibly passionate about the work that he does and it really, really shows whenever I see him present, whether it's at a house tour or just a one of our trainings, he just has such amazing energy and passion towards what we do. And he truly is a product of the product. He has been very successful with both real estate and marketing. And that's why we have him here each and every Tuesday. Before Renata Spill was a pro skier, he was doing that for 10 years in Bell, Colorado. And he realized that he really wasn't qualified to do much else. And so then he actually got into the franchise business. He owned a couple of stores and due to lack of knowledge, he ended up losing everything. He then heard about real estate investing and that was in about 2007. And he hadn't heard about Renatus yet, but he just knew real estate investing was something that could be really lucrative. And so he attempted to learn this on his own. And in 2008, when the crash hit, he actually ended up in about over $400,000 of debt in real estate. So after the crash is actually when Bill found Renatus and his first year in Renatus, he earned eight times more than he did the previous year as both a loan officer and a realtor. Ever since then, Bill has completed around 150 deals, probably quite a few more than that by now. And he is also a marketing leader. He is on the pit, meaning he's on the president's advisory council in training. And he won a trip to London last year with a lot of the top income earners. And he's just, like I said, a product of the product and sets so such a great example for us to all follow. So take notes today. I'm excited for what Bill has to share with us. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. What's up, you deals? Hey, Billy. How are we doing? Doing awesome. How are you today? Good. You look good in the mornings, man. I don't know, man. I just, I do not. <laughs> well, thanks. Um, welcome, everybody. So happy to be here. So honored to be here and uh, so excited to be here with all y'all. And, um, and Keely, once again, knock it out of the park with everything you do for us. Uh, you're, you know what, you guys, I'll tell you, it, everybody's journey is different. But, um, you know, Keely's is really taking off. Uh, it's, it's really paying off, like uh, just the commitment. I mean, being, being part of leadership and part of um, you know, uh, volunteering some time, if you want to call it that, or I should say just dedicating time to your business and, and other aspects like Keely does, you know, and I know like a lot of you do across the country for your team. So uh, I can only speak, I can't speak to everybody, but you guys get what I'm saying. So as you bring up your teams and same thing, um, it, for me, it was the same way. They, when most of the time we, we want to contribute, um, it, for, for all different reasons, right? But ultimately, we do want to help our business. We do want to be, um, you know, we do want to lead a team and we do want to make money and then help others make money and so on and so forth. And, uh, and with everything Keely's been doing, hanging around the right people, doing, the, doing a lot of the things that she's been doing across the country, it's, you know, it, it helps to support her business and it's it's making a difference she's doing she's doing amazing things you guys i don't know if everybody everybody doesn't know how everybody's doing but she's doing great things so thanks every uh keely for everything you do for us um we just uh, it would not be the same without you so uh so stick around <laughs> right on all right folks so i'll just shout it out real quick seven six oh uh, i gotta my chat's over on my other screen seven six oh five three 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 one four one 760-533-3141. So that's my cell phone. If anybody ever needs to or wants to or chooses to or would like to, um, you know, reach out for any reason, um, any type of support, uh, feel free. Uh, I'll, put, uh, I'll put that number out there. Um, I just always put this disclaimer that uh, a lot of times, oh my God, like one of my team members actually did some cabinet work for me on one of my flips. And um, like he sent me an invoice like, I don't know, through PayPal, through email or something. I, I mean, I saw it. I didn't really pay attention to it. And then he forgot to tell me about it. And so it got buried. And I owed the guy like 800 bucks for two weeks. And I finally paid him last night. And he's like, hey, man, did you ever get that invoice? I resent it to him. I'm like, oh, my God. So if I ever <laughs> don't uh, get to you, please hit me up again. Because it just means I forgot. 
which I, I think I have a mental problem and or um, <laughs> or uh, it just got buried and I didn't get around to it. So uh, just hit me up again. You're not bugging me. Um, all right. So you know what? You're never going to believe this. I actually listened to Michael's training a little bit again yesterday, this morning on my dog walk, because I wanted to add, I wanted to talk about, uh, I thought it was really good. Right. And, um, and I, and I think it's good to like build on that. But a lot of, one of the things that I don't do is, um, and I try to is engage you guys by giving you the opportunities, you know, to please uh, jump out, interrupt, comment, any comments I see, of course, Keely helps me out with that. I'll um, keep looking and then, and then elaborate on that. We can go on that tangent. And so you all know that if you raise your hand or if you just come off mute or do anything and you type it in, I'm gonna, we can talk to anything that's important to you. But I don't necessarily always, uh, I think I do it really well when I speak in public, but I haven't on Zooms where I really, um, you know, ask questions of y'all just because of the platform. Many of you are driving to work, you're at work, uh, you're just getting up. Um, and so it's not as convenient for everybody, you know, being right there to engage. So I don't want to, um, you know, sit there and go, Hey, who, who, who thought of this? And no one answers just cause you know what I mean? So, but Michael was even good at, you know, getting some chats in there yesterday about, you know, who thinks that the, the value of the education is there and things like that. So please don't be offended by that. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll try to remember to just ask more questions and engage you guys. Cause I know that's as important as anything I have to say. So um, I want you to know that I don't feel like uh, anything that I have to say is, is any more important than anybody else's. Um, which brings me to this, to this little topic. Um, you know, given everything Michael said yesterday, and many of you might not have been on the training, most of you probably were, um, but we get a lot of trainings. You know, he was really talking to the value of you, you know, if you compare our education and our opportunity in real estate, um, and financial literacy and the prices and the longevity, the lifetime access and the, and the benefits and the bonuses and the support and all that and the accolades that we've gotten from Inc. 5000 and so on and so forth. When you talk about all these things, you know, and you compare the product, it's, it's fairly uncomparable in, in a lot of ways. I, I always say this in front of the room, you guys, is that, and girls, obviously, uh, I gotta be politically correct, I guess. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know, maybe I do. Um, all of you folks that, um, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what's right and wrong anymore in COVID days. Like, you know, I don't know, government can come through your door at this point uh, and get you and quarantine you. And like, Bill went to that island and no one's ever seen from him again. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Whew, I'm not watching sci-fi channels at all. Okay, so um, uh, what was I saying, Keely? <laughs> it was really important. Um, You're referring to Michael's training yesterday. Yeah. And so the value and um, now nah, there was something I was saying. I got on that tangent. Okay, guys and girls. Ah, man, how do I do that? So uh, that's crazy that I forget stuff like that. Um, that's probably. <laughs> so anyway, we'll keep going. So here's what I got. Um, so we have all this value and then. Um, and then we have uh, a breakdown in, in sales, right? Um, and and it's, it's on us to, to get the word out about our value, right? And so maybe if you feel like it, you can chat in the chat or come off mute and just tell me, and we don't have to like, I'm not gonna wait, I'll keep going. But as I start to see things, Tell me why you feel either you or we or people in general, ICMs, don't sell it more. Like, why don't we have more sales? Right? Asking questions of your audience. I don't know what that means, Amy. She was trying to rem remind you what you may have been talking oh, about. Oh, 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 thank you. Perfect, Amy. Thank you. Asking questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fear of asking, limiting beliefs uh, on both sides. What do you mean by that? Limiting beliefs of, of the ICM, fearful of asking for the order because of limiting beliefs, and then limiting beliefs of the person purchasing. Oh, okay. So, oh, so they might, so we don't make more sales because they don't, they don't, they don't 
either because of our time. limiting beliefs or because of their limiting beliefs. Okay, so so good point. So what I'm thinking about is it's us. And here's why I'm saying that. We're going to run into people that, that don't sell, right? But, or that don't buy. So get me on this, you guys. This has become now, it's, it, I'm going to check the number, but this has been a billion dollar a year industry for, for a, te- a decade and now even more. It's probably closer to $1.5 billion is spent on real estate investing education. So if you look at Than Merrill and Fortune Builders, actually their numbers are went down a little bit with COVID and they're adjusting as well. But they are also, they're at $150 million a year in sales, right? We're at 20 million, okay? So we have a, we have a long way to go and we have a five superior product. Oh, I know what I was saying. Thank you. Asking questions of your audience. We are not doing MMA. What is MMA, Wanda? Uh, money making activities, Billy. Money making activities. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Good. So we're putting some responsibility on us. All right. I love it. I love the communication. See, you don't have to be know everything to do this, you guys. Okay. Are there recordings of these trainings? Okay. Oh, sorry, Nancy. Yes, I'll get that to you. Yep. Absolutely. And um, and uh, they are on the Elevate, Nancy. They are on the Elevate uh, YouTube channel. The Elevate. Facebook group, join that group, Elevate uh, Facebook group, uh, Elevate Renata's Facebook group, and you will see all of these, like three or four years of trainings, four days a week. Uh, Cool. Can you go over the four beliefs? Yes, four core beliefs. Wow, you're going to put me on the spot there. (laughs) I always forget one. Okay, all right, so this is great. We're going to hit these. Okay, so check this out. So here's, we're going to, we're going to freaking solve this problem right now. Um, This is going to be awesome. Okay. So, um, the four core beliefs, um, everybody needs Renatus. Okay. So whatever we offer, (laughs) Keely's laughing. (laughs) So Keely, you're my backup. Okay. So everybody needs Renatus. Okay. And, and, and when we, if we want to just really quickly elaborate on that, I mean, all honesty, what that means is even people, okay. Like does the president need Renatus? I don't know. There are things in Renatus that the president probably paid somebody to tell him to know about, okay? So he probably needed Renatus at one time, but he has Renatus. He has property. He makes a ton of money. He saves, I don't even think, I'm pretty sure you heard the presidents tell us that he doesn't pay taxes, so even better for him. So he doesn't need the tax class. (laughs) So, um, so, uh, there are people sometimes that don't need, um, that may not necessarily need Renatus, uh, but if they are looking, if you think about it, there's a billionaires club, okay? Billionaires and multimillionaires and hundred millionaires. What do they do? They mastermind, all right? They get in a level of people where they're the next level up. Like no entrepreneur that I know of ever, like Bill Gates, they don't stop working. They, they, they might slow down to some extent, or maybe they go to a higher level that it takes them three years to do a deal because they're doing bigger deals, but they don't, they don't stop, right? So they're constantly working. Kent Clothier could just sit on the beach in his six and a half million dollar La Jolla home, and, but the guy is, is relentless, right? And his family is relentless. His dad still runs Memphis Invest. They do 450 trans- wholesale transactions a year in Memphis, Tennessee. I didn't even know they had that many houses, right? So I'm going to get to these, uh, these points here. So uh, thank you, Wanda. Renatus is the best earning opportunity. Okay. She, oh, she put them up there. Good enough. So I'm not, maybe I'm not going in order. So, but in, in reality, what we're getting at with this is that everybody does need what Renatus teaches, right? We need the, even if you make a lot of money, right? Most people, like if we think about it, and I talk about this in, in presentations and stuff, you guys, like honestly, if the, it, Renatus would not be valuable and nor would real estate investing education if our 401k system wasn't broken, okay? Back in the day, there was a pension, right? And most companies, most people worked 40 years at the same company, like the majority. And they, they re- went up in the ranks, their pension went up, and then they collected social security, which was powerful, and they collected a pension, right? And then they might've even had some retirement of some sort, 
They might've had some stocks if they invested it, but everybody typically back then, just like now, lived paycheck to paycheck. So the only thing they had was social security and a pension. The, the companies were taking care of it. But in the eighties, they got rid of pensions, right? And to speak of mostly, they all retirement plans fell on the individual and the individual. And so they created 401ks, IRAs, and all these, all, you know, all these major companies and, and the whole stock market, all this crap to you retire yourself. You, it's a freaking free world. You go make the money, you go put it somewhere, become rich, become poor, whatever you do. So when we look at the statistics in the 65 year olds, we, we blow this off all the time, but people are like, oh, I'm doing well. Like my neighbor, Eric, doing really well. Wife's, wife's you know, not working. He's got the job. He makes good money. He didn't sign up for Renatus. He needs Renatus, right? He has no rental property. He's got equity in his home. He's going to you know, buy a boat. He's going to raise these two kids, put them through college and everything, and everything's going to be fine. But anything unpredictable to him, right? If he does not do a Dave Ramsey thing where from when you're 22 in your first job to when you're 35, put 40% of your, of your retirement away, you're not retiring a millionaire. You're not, right? Like I was talking to my sister-in-law Well, my wife was talking to her sister the other day. And again, she's like, oh, this lady has this, this lady's like a little bit higher level than her at this corporation. Stuart, they own 38 hospitals that she works for. They bought out my buddy's hospital, IASIS Healthcare. It's a, it's a $20 billion company. And one of, the, one of the VPs, right? She's in her 60s. She saved a million dollars, like in her retirement, a million dollars. So 45 years to become a millionaire, right? She has a really big house that she loves. Her dream house, they've done all this work to it, right? This is in Texas and, and, it's, and it's a big house. And so you, it's not free and clear, <laughs> okay? And my, my sister-in-law is like, told, told my wife, she's like, oh yeah, you know, she's got a million dollars in the, in the retirement. I kind of see the 401ks. I, she's in the finance department. She's the, not the CFO, but she's up there. And she's like, oh yeah, she's got plenty of money, right? And, and I'm thinking to myself, and Sherry's going through the numbers too. We're like, like, she's got a $4,000 a month, a month mortgage on this gorgeous house, right? And you know, they, they're accustomed to living fairly extravagant. You think she can just retire on a, on a million dollars for 20 years? No freaking way. Right. We've seen that. We've seen the retirement calculator. You're talking about 3000 a month. You think someone that has a $4,000 a month mortgage payment is going to be comfortable retiring at $3,000 a month for 20 years and not even possible, whether she gets a social security check for 1500 a month or not, right? A million is not anywhere enough. You're exactly right. Keo. So it's crazy what people think. And most people don't have a million. They have 150,000. My sister's been working, I told you guys this, my sister-in-law has been working in corporate America as a, an executive, six-figure income earner now, for, put two kids through college. For, she's 54, so for 30 plus years, 35 years, right out, of high, right out of college, she went into the hospital system. And she has like $350,000 in her retirement. She doesn't even own a home anymore. She sold her home to move here, and then she moved to Texas and she rents right? She leases her Camaro, right? It's like, it's, it's a false impression. That's why everybody needs Renatus. Number two. Um, okay. That, uh, it's, we are the best income. I don't know if you can say that income opportunity. Um, no, it's kind of a dual edged sword, right? Is that right? No, swords kill you. So we don't want to kill each other. We want a dual, a dual income opportunity, right? So we've got the best product right out there for financial literacy, for financial freedom. And we've got the income earning opportunity, right? So in, in belief, our, on a separate side of things, our compensation plan and our income opportunity at 50% plus the overrides, blah, 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 all that stuff. It's the best in the country. And then when you, when you supplement it or complement it with the real estate education, which is where I'm going to spend at least 20 minutes of the training on today. I'm gonna really, we're going to hammer this out. Um, we have the, in, the real estate investing education, financial literacy education, and now business education to, to accelerate anything you're doing, right? Um, we are doing them a favor. Okay. And this is tough. It's tough to believe. Like, like who actually walks down the street and goes, I'm doing them a favor by introducing them to Renatus, right? If we really want to look at in the face, uh, for face value, right? And, and it's weird if we don't feel that way, right? We just spent 20 grand. We haven't done anything. We've got to learn to believe this, right? We ha this is a learned behavior in my opinion. And the way that you learn it is you spend more time on these trainings. 
by the way, congratulations for being here. Uh, Michael mentioned that yesterday too. I just learned from so many people listening, Wanda and, and, and Dane on, on Wednesday and Thursday, just listening to other trainers. But, um, uh, you know, if we really look at it, um, we've got to learn this belief that we're doing someone a favor by giving them or not. Okay. So in my opinion, like, how am I doing Eric? I have to, like, I have to, I have to consciously know, especially if I don't feel it yet, how I would be doing my neighbor, my neighbor, Eric, a favor. Right. And, and the way that I know that is by asking him questions. And, you know, when I was courting him, <laughs> for lack of a better term, and getting him into Renata said so he turned me down so far. It wasn't, it's just no for now. Right. I'm going to hit him up soon. I'm just waiting for the perfect time. So uh, he was talking to me about this cabin that he should have bought three years ago. Right. And the market was still down. It was nowhere near what it is now. And it was up North and he, and he wanted to get this really nice dream home that they're living in with their boys right around the corner from my house and all this stuff. So they chose, his wife chose not to buy the cabin in Prescott and he regrets it. Right. Cause the heat we've had a, what 30 days over 110 degrees this year or over 105. I don't know. It's been crazy. And we're not even in August barely. Right. So, uh, I know that had he had Renatus, had he had any real estate investing education, he could have had both properties, right? And, and he knows there's some regret there, that he wishes that could have been come to wishes. But all he knows in his brain is that they had a choice and they made the choice for the house and he doesn't regret that choice. But he didn't think he could eat his cake, have his cake and eat it too, right? So there's more ways than we'll ever know unless we ask people why everybody needs Renatus. Right. Nobody wants to keep a 30 year mortgage. Most people don't even know that's just the standard. They don't know that there's another option. There's so much value. So we all know that. And then finally, um, if they say no, uh, then it's their loss. Right. And um, and and what does that mean? You guys can interpret it however you want. For me. Um, There's, there's a, a bunch of ways to think about it, but if you, if there was something, if there was something that you don't know, right? And, and typically, protectively, our brains will tell us to say no to it, right? Right away, especially when it comes to buying something, we can't afford it. It's money we don't have. It's money we could spend elsewhere. It's, it's college fund money. It's a risk. I could lose it. It might not work. I'm not just talking about opportunity with Renatus, but anything like a car, right? We go to the car and we're like, oh my God, I'd love to have that one, but I'm going to get this one. Um, you know, I, I'd love to go, to, you know, to buy this chair, but I'm going to buy that one because it's a little, right? We say no to stuff based on fear, right? And based on what we've been taught. So when we don't know any better, right? and we don't have all the information, it is our loss on, on even the smallest of scales that, that if we say no, that when good opportunity is there and we don't know about it, then it is our loss because there's a way, we, we wouldn't have been like, think about this. We wouldn't have been considering it, right? If we're saying no to something, it came across our desk. It was a for lack of a better just analogy, it was a deal that came across our desk, whether it was at Costco and there were two choices of, of things to buy, right? And we chose the less expensive one or whether it's um, something at work and we had to work an extra, out, an extra day on a weekend, but we didn't know that the president of the United States was going to be there, you know, that weekend, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, like all these opportunities come our way and we say no because we don't know enough about it and we say no to protect ourselves. I got to go to the kids' ball game. Right. And so we, we end up, we, we could, we end up losing because we don't have enough information. It's the same thing here. They don't have enough information. They say no for whatever reason, whatever fear holds them back and it is their loss. Okay. So there's your four beliefs. All right. So we're not doing money making activities. We're going to go back to this. So why don't we, um, why don't we sell more? Why don't we make more sales? Um, okay. You can't say number one, you can say best opportunity. Renatus is the best doing. Okay, thank you very much for clarifying. That's for com um, for uh, compliance. I'm definitely learning a new mindset. Awesome. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see. 
there is no question that most of us are working on those core beliefs. We've been told about those core beliefs, or if you've been around a, few, a little long enough, you have those four core beliefs, right? We literally believe in this, like you believe in whatever faith you have, like you believe in, you know, your children, like you believe in, um, I don't know, whatever, your I don't know, money itself has value, whatever you think, that is, um, that is true. Uh, we, we, we have those core beliefs and that way we can, we can easily talk. Well, not easily. We can, without a doubt, not have a fear of talking to somebody about Renatus when we're, when we're asking for the order or anything like that. We, we know we're not, we're not screwing them over. Okay. Okay. So, um, knowing all these things and knowing like what Michael talked about yesterday, the value, the lifetime education, um, when we compare and we look at the competition, this billion dollar a year industry. And so Keeley put up there, follow me on this. Keeley put up there limiting beliefs on both sides. There's no question that <clears throat> there's a hundred things that other people feel, a thousand that you're going to come across that they're not going to buy. So we're not going to make more sales because of the person we're selling it to. I don't disagree. They have limiting beliefs. They don't have the money. They don't have the resource. They can't, they're afraid of making money. They're afraid of taking a chance that, I mean, the wife said no, every objection you could possibly imagine, it's probably true. It's an excuse. We know that it's an objection. It's the fear. It's whatever it is, but it is what it is. Like we can't control that. We can become better salespeople, right? We can become um, persistent and follow up constantly. And we can wait for the timing to be right. We can help them find the money. All of these things are good things that we can do that we can control, but we cannot control their decision. What we can control is our end of things, right? We can control our own limiting beliefs. We can control our own ability to do, to, to do MMAs. I learned a new concept. <laughs> like, I, how do I not know? Money-making activities, right? We can control if we're doing those things. We can control our ability to learn, to have a learned behavior of the four core beliefs, okay? So, uh, and Nancy, I'm going to get to your stuff on the private side. All right. So check this out. Um, uh, what were those? All right. So if we can control these things and we're looking at the ability to make more sales, which is what we want to do. Right. And, and if I look at the majority of us, like, it's, it's crazy. Like, even if I look at my numbers, I'm going to go specifically to me so that you guys can see you're not in this alone. All right. If we look at what we're doing and the lack of success that we're having or the lack of sales that we're having, right. It, we got, we, we got to figure that out because if we go to a, if we go to a, an event and they sell on our models that we do not sell on, they sell on fear, right? The takeaway, the urgency, buy it now, the discounts, the upsell model, they get, they collect their information, right? They've advertised, they've marketed, and they've packed the room with all these investors, whether it's a Zoom, online, whatever they're doing now, even, they're selling a crap ton of education. That is half the value, okay? It's just a fact. How are they doing it? They're doing it because they're putting the right people in the room. If 50 or 70% of the room doesn't buy, I don't care. They don't care. They expect that. So what is it to them? A numbers game. What is it to us? A numbers game. If we're having five people tell us they'd love to get in Renatus and we would love to do this and we want it and we think it and we believe it and we're not the jack in the box believer. We're the actual believer that if we buy it, it will turn it on and it will, it will, it will actually show up as education. But we, but they're not able to buy it or they can't, they make, they can't make the decision to buy it. Their, their wife isn't or husband isn't on board, whatever their object, objection is, then, then we're doing one of two things. We're not fishing in the right pond or we don't have enough people in front of the information. If five of them are saying no, we need five more that are saying yes, because they're saying yes somewhere. Michael went over this. They're literally saying yes. They're running to the back of the, somebody's room, okay? Yeah, they might have different tactics, but the people are looking for, I was thinking about this today. So for me directly, right? I was talking to 
one of my prospects that's in my pipeline that's warm market. And I'm doing a little convincing. Now they talked about real estate and business and stuff like that. And they, they came to me, right? But they didn't say, Bill, I want to learn. I want to pay for real estate investing education, right? When you go to a seminar, you know, at some point in your brain, you're going to get sold something and they're going to ask you for a sale. And so you're there because you want to learn to real estate invest. So that pond is hot. When you buy leads on the internet, and I know, I know we don't, but if you own a biz op, okay, these, these biz op things that you can get into, right? You pay $5.95 and then you pay $5,000 a month or whatever for American Express and everybody back you up. And then you got to get a bunch of people, you know, to sign up for your business opportunity. You buy business at home business leads, right? And if they just recently put their name, address, and email or whatever it is, or phone number into a, a Google search and, and, and logged into someone's landing page, that leads captured and sold all over the planet. I don't know how this works. I'm assuming this is true. And you can go to a lead source and you can buy this lead and that lead is hot. That's a five or $10 today's market lead, right? Because they're looking for a biz off. And then you gotta, you gotta be the one to sell them your biz off, your at-home opportunity versus anybody. That is a powerful lead. But if you're just on the internet and you go through the phone book, for those of you who are under 40, um, phone book is like a physical thing and it used to have phone numbers in it and like you look it up by alphabetical order and it had their little address printed and then their phone number and you could look and, you, and it was big i mean it was like we use it for door stops or you know if you needed to step up on something it was a good i'm just kidding if you went through your phone and you just called a, a list of realtors on a google search in your area and you just call them up and you're like hey man you should see my, my presentation i know that's not how you pitch it but you guys get what i'm saying they're, they're so cold, they're not, they may not even ever want to have to do with real estate investing education or ever spending money, right? It was hard enough that they spent $500 on their, on their 90 hours. They failed the, the test four times and now they got to pay for Supra and they got to hang their license and all this stuff and they got to pay for advertising. And you're like, hey, you should be an investor, right? It, it's not even on their radar, whether they love and passion, if they're passionate about real estate or not, right? So you're fishing in the wrong bucket. They, the, the, ad, the advertisements for these major billion dollar companies that are selling all of these education packages are getting people to their events that are interested in real estate, right? They're not out on the street doing third, three foot rule, okay? They're, they're not. They're mass marketing. They're taking what? Massive action. And they're having what? Massive results. There isn't a person on this phone, including me. Is this a phone? It's not even a phone. It's like a phone you guys used to actually plug into the wall and had a little cord. God, we're going, I'm old. I'm not old. I'm only 39. So, all right. This is so fun. So, all right. So we obviously get my point. Let's go to this. Um, we have, we have got to make a decision at some point that this is what you want to do, right? That you want to make a sale, that you want to build a team. Now I know that you all want to do that. You wouldn't be here, but do you know what I mean? Like wanting to, to do all of those things is great. And I know that you have a burning desire to do it. I think you, you bleed blue, as Bob would say. Um, but we still have a barrier. Like it's just, it's a fact. Like otherwise the top 10 list would not be number 10 at, at $5,000 or whatever, right? Um, we would all be making $10,000 sales every month. Because why? We would be talking to more people. We would be talking to the right people. We would, um, we would be talking more often, right? And, and we would be, we would, that's all we would do, right? And if there was a, like, so I was talking to Eric today on my walk a little bit and, um, and you know, he got this new job, right? That was part of his excuse of why he didn't join. You know, he's got, got this new job coming and, and I think it pays a little more. I'm not, I don't know what he makes to be honest. Um, it's got some bonus and he's waiting on a new comp plan. They've had to transfer over to a bunch of COVID stuff. So they're not even selling their regular medical doctor stuff, but he still calls our doctor on zoom and all this stuff all over his territory. And they're selling all this testing now that they're creating. And there's, it's not COVID testing, I don't think, but it's, maybe it's an antibody testing. There's something they're creating this, this company is creating stuff. Maybe it's the materials they need for the testing. I don't know. And so, uh, so it's so crazy, right? So I asked him about it and where was I going with this? Um, and um, I got to think, I got to think, I got to think I got a really good point. Um, 
so we, we got to make a decision. Um, ah, how do I do that? Hopefully he'll come back to me. <laughs> he'll just laughing at me. Okay. So, so I'm talking to Eric on my walk. I'm trying to remember what I said. And, um, and I asked him, he's like, Oh, I'm waiting on my comp plan. I know I was going to say that, um, to come out. Oh, I know what it was. Got it. So he's got this, he's got this salary. You guys, he's got a base. Right now he's on commission, but he's got a base. It's, it's guaranteed. And so we got to think about it. If, if we could guarantee ourselves 50 K a year, and I don't know everybody's situation, um, 50 K a year for me in 2008, wasn't going to cut it. Right. I, I needed to make 10, I needed to make hundred K a year, but, but 50 K is a good start. So that's five sales in one year. Right. And that's if you do them all direct yourself and you don't build a team and you're assuming you're five star qualified. So you're not quitting your job this year. You're not doing whatever business you're doing. You're going to keep it. We're talking about getting five star qualified. Most of you are probably three star, which means you're going to still make $17,500 over the next $35,000 that you create. Okay. So part time 17, five over the next five months. Why not? Like, what's the problem? Right. So at some point, if this was guaranteed to us, like if you put in the effort, I promise you, if you don't make it, if you don't sell five people and you don't make the 17, five over the next five and a half months and you work 10 hours a week, I build Predabon personally will give you 17, five. You'd be like, I'm doing it. I'm going to put in the effort. I'm going to meet all the criteria at the end of the month when you check it off. And at the end of the year and you look at me in December and yeah, I only made five grand in CV. But I, get, I did all the effort and I talked to all the people and I went to all the events and I did all the trainings and I did all these certain requirements. You're guaranteed. You do the work. You would do it because you're like, I'm going to make 17.5. If I literally don't work 10 hours a week, I'm not going to make 17.5 minimum. But the potential you could make would, could be 50 grand in the next five and a half months. But we make, we, we make a decision because we don't believe. We know that that's not true. We know that we've tried before and failed, right? And when I say fail, what I mean is people have come to the events. We've had a few people. We've had guests. We can't get them on the phone. They ghost us. They don't buy. They don't have the money. We waste our time. It doesn't work. We can't overcome the objections. We can't get our five star on the phone. We can't. Like all of these things are like totally legitimate. They crap. Like you're on this call. So I know you're doing some marketing at some point, right? Maybe some of you are brand new and you're going to be doing it, but you're going to have these valleys and peaks and you're going to have someone, you know, you're going to have five people booked and they're not going to show up. And if it doesn't piss you off, then you're lying to me, right? It's, or you're embarrassed or you're upset or you're disappointed or you're pissed or all the above, right? And then if you get someone on the ropes, like, I'm in, I'm going, I'm, 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 yeah, I want to go to the property tour. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I've got, you know, I got a great credit score. Uh, it's going to be awesome. And you go through the whole thing and then they ghost you, right? Right. Or they flat out tell you, no, eight people this year. $80,000 on the table I would have had right this year that I thought was in the books, canceled. I'm still like chasing them, right? This is going to happen. And so why would we continue to do that? It doesn't make any sense. Like naturally I could go to the event on Zoom or go watch a movie. The movie is going to give me instant gratification. I could go to my kid's ball game. I could go shopping. I could sit home. I could do something else. That makes me feel good. It doesn't make me feel crappy because all this Renata's crap makes me feel crappy. It doesn't work. Like, I'm not saying it doesn't work for some people. And I'm not saying it doesn't work for like, it could work for me, but it hasn't worked for me. So I'm going to limit the amount of time that I do it. it. That's totally legit. You guys. So as entrepreneurs, and, and that's why there's so much training on this. And that's why there's so much decision-making to be made every day. We've got to make a decision to talk to somebody else. We cannot fish in a three foot pond at wherever you're fishing at, right? If everybody needs it. So, you know, punch the guy in the, in the face next to you at Starbucks and ask him if he's invested in real estate. Great. All right. Stick, get, grab his business card and give him a call. But the odds of that becoming a closing are one in a thousand. Okay. If you do that, then make a decision at some point during the day to call up somebody you give a crap about, that you care about, and that you want to actually have on your team, that you'd enjoy going somewhere with or working with. Those are the ones that are going to have a 50% chance of closing, 
right? Those are the ones that trust that if you sell them something, it's not gonna break the next day or it's not gonna not work, right? So at some point, you guys, when we look at the breakdown and we look at the billion plus dollar industry that the real estate investing education, the at-home education, the at-home business, right? The opportunity for people to make more money than they ever made before. The, the opportunity to spend more time with the family, the opportunity to have a retirement account, to buy a rental property. I'm, I'm gonna have to go into my, what I wanna talk about next week, but about this week, but I'll touch on it. All of this, these opportunities are, are there for them, right? And I have no idea where I was going with that. Again, I got distracted. So, um, <laughs> wow, it must be the coffee. <laughs> this morning or something. I got up at like five. Maybe I got up too early. So <laughs> whew, maybe whatever uh, that thing is that I have, I don't know, maybe it's ADHD. I don't know. Maybe I need a doctor. Okay. So, <laughs> wow. So, all right, let's go. Let's go to me. All right. So we need to make a decision. So right now, you guys, I think I'm at 50. Um, I want to say I'm at 58,000. Maybe I'm at 52,000 for the year. And we're seven months past. And, and my goal was adjusted come COVID and everything. I adjusted it to, you know, I haven't really focused on the Viking trip, to be honest with you. It's on my list. I wrote it down. It's, it's on my desk and stuff like that. But I don't know what that number looks like. And I, I don't, I, I struggle right now with it because um, I don't, you know, I, th I think to myself, the top five, right? This is being me putting it out there, you guys. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to give it a shot still. Um, I, I, I would love it. it. It would be cool. Like, and to be honest, if I, had, if I had to tell you the truth of why I'm motivated, yeah, I want to go to the river cruise and it'd be really cool. But I know someday I'll have the money to do it, whatever the hell I want anyway. So, but I'm thinking like it's the prestige, right? I'm in the top five or I won the trip. That's like really valuable to me, right? It's just, it's just my sense of a comp, not the, not the, not the award itself, but my sense of accomplishment, right? So, and, and I've, I've rarely ever been in, in sales contest, contests where I've won them. I've never really been in that type of sales environment before. So, it's, so like, so I, 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 I guess my envy would be that it was them and not me, right? So, so that motivates me, if that makes sense, right? So I'm going to work on it again. And I got to figure out what the number is. But my main goal is to pack again. So I want to make 150. So I'm, ha I'm not even halfway there and more than half the year's over. So in me right now, I'm failing. I got a lot of work to do over the next five and a half months. Is it four and a half months? I don't even know. So with that being said, you guys, I, we look at our situation and, um, and there is no question in my mind that I have made decisions where I have not done marketing. And what I mean by that is that I have not, had enough leads. Like I'm literally not taking any massive action at all. Right. I talk to people all the time. And, and most of the time I even have people coming to me and I have a team helping me sell. That's part of that, that 50, whatever thousand it is. So I, I might have a leg up on a few of you with the team working to help, you know, I'm doing the work with them, but they're, they're actually getting the lead, right? It would be one less lead that I would have. And I've probably gone through a few leads with them. So now it's multiple less leads. So if I look at myself and I look at what I need to do, <clears throat> I've got to come up with a freaking lead source and I can't just put an ad on Craigslist and hope that that works. And I know those aren't compliant, but I mean, even in the free ones where, you know, whatever you're saying, Hey, if you ever, if you're buying real estate, maybe you want to learn how to do it right or something. I don't know. You know, it's not a job ad. <clears throat> I've got to network. And if I'm not networking, okay, I'm paying a coach, for example, and I'm not taking advantage of what the co coach is telling me. I got to be flat honest with you. I went into the Facebook groups. I've, we've all been working on that. If you've been doing that at all, I've created my own Facebook group. I have been doing this crap and I hate it. I'm not into it. I don't like doing it. It's not the way that I, my brain operates. So I got to get over it. Like this is true. And I'm sure it's true for you. There are things that you're being told to do. And you're like, this is goes against everything that I know, right? Facebook group, getting in there, making comments, pulling them out, putting them in my Facebook group, being Sandy girl Clark does not mesh with my freaking brain, all right? But it's still a lead source. So if I'm not gonna do that, and I'm not gonna take it seriously, then I gotta do something else, right? And that's the only thing you have to do. That's the, 
at some point, Van Merrill hired people, and I'm going to use him just because he's number one, right? I mean, these guys, Tarek and, and all these people, Rich Dad and these guys forever, they have hired people and done it themselves where they bring people together and they get a bunch of leads and they present them with the information. They could care less about the 90% that are not going to buy. But if they got 100 people in the room and 10 people buy, you just made 100 freaking grand. Okay, but you're not getting 100 people in the room, nor am I. And I'm not talking about 100 Craigslist people or 100 people from, you know, in a, in, in a Facebook group that are literally saying they, they would never buy education and you're in bigger pockets and bigger pockets is free and that's where you're fishing. They're free. Right? They're not interested in paying. They want, they're going to do it all on their own. They're thick headed. Why would I pay for education? Right? You're, you're not fishing in the right pond. John O'Neill killed it when he used to pay money to go to events where people wanted to buy education. <laughs> right? Like that's, that's where he went fishing. The pond had the, had the biggest fish and yeah, there were sharks all over the pond, but he darted away and got hidden. And then he'd just grab a couple of other fish and get come hide from hide with me over here, right? Like, like that's what where you need to do. And I'm not saying you've got your job, you got your life, and all that stuff. You guys legitimately real. But let's just say over the next four months, you want to make 20 freaking thousand bucks. That's two combos. Then let's talk to 10 warm people. You like people. 20 warm people because you probably suck at it, right? So you're going to screw it up and you're not going to know what to say. You're going to be afraid to follow up and it, fine. Okay, let's make a new list. 20 people. 20 people that you actually care about that you, if, if you had a choice, you would buy a, you would buy an Airbnb with these people. Okay. That would be who you'd go into business with. Regardless if they're broke, regardless if they're rich, regardless if they're poor, regardless if they're in another state. No matter what, you're like, wow, I would love to, if I was in my house and I could see, you know, my friend Angie and she lives in Florida and, and it would be so cool if me and her got, got went and did business together. I'm going to call Angie up, right? Then do that. Like, make a decision because Michael, Michael hit this home last, yesterday, man, is that people are buying. We have literally the four core beliefs are legit. Like they're legitimate beliefs and what we have and the Bob Snyder presenting it lifetime. The value is off the chain. Nobody will ever spend 20 grand and ever complain about the education or the opportunity that they have with the 20 grand. They will complain about their ability to work. They will complain about any, if we pitch them the ICM and they're not making, making sales and they're, they thought they could make money. They're going to get pissed because it's, it's, it's a difficult business. It's a simple business, but it's a difficult business. And that takes time far more, right? But at any given time, if they ever implement anything in the Renatus education, and we're going to talk in on this. Thank you, Brian. Let's get, let's get on it, man. Let's not long, no longer work on it. Let's just do it. Um, let's just start with one or two. <clears throat> um, you guys, they, they will be happy with what they purchased from you and you will have done them a favor. They will be grateful they got it and it will be the best thing they ever had. They may not come out of the gate and make up and do a fix and flip. So I got 758, I've been watching the chat. So check this out, squirrel moment. Anne-Marie and Devin, you're too funny. All right, okay, so this is the truth and I, and you've heard me say this, but I wanna, I'm want i gonna focus on it and I'm really gonna elaborate on it next week. I'm gonna remember it. So if I come up with some other crap topic next week, Keely and everybody else tell me that I already had a topic and it's called this. It's called the Renatus Wealth Cycle, okay? Now, I'm, most of you are newer. Uh, many of you like Wanda too have, have done tons of fix and flips and, um, and wholesale deals or whatever, all right? But hear me out on this. Like, there's a reason you're on this stupid one-hour call at 7 in the morning, 8 in the morning, 9 in the morning, getting training one or two or four days a week. And then you spend Thursday night for two or three hours in a, in a mastermind that makes really no sense 
if you think about it, because you've got the greatest mentors on the planet, which are your educators, right? So you, technically, you could put yourself up somewhere in Alaska I've never heard of and never get on a mastermind and kill it in real estate with the education that you have, okay? I'm kidding about the study groups. They're amazing. But you guys get my point. We're doing things like spending an, an entire Saturday on a super Saturday, hoping, praying, because our mentors told us that we need to be at the Super Saturdays. You know, Mr. Super Saturday, it's going to make $10,000. Okay. So if you're doing this, all right, and, and we make these decisions and we take it seriously and we quit the excuses and we go back to Kelly, to Kelly, to Keely's limiting beliefs. And we, and we, and we take one of these trainings and we, and we really work on it. Now listen, and you, and you, and you seriously call your five star or, or your Packer pit member in your, in your field, and you have to have a conversation for 15 or 20 minutes with them about how serious you are about doing this and making 10 or 20 grand. And you've got a job. One, most of you, if not all of you, have an income source of some kind. You keep that for a while. You work on your credit. You work on maybe learning how to raise private money. And you work on, um, you work on um, the ability to maybe buy and hold, maybe multifamily, understanding the, a couple of formulas. Um, and then... You may work on velocity banking, building a little credit. Um, just work on, your, on yourself, on your financial homestead, okay? And, and you pretend or you commit to Renatus as a part-time job. Like it's a physical job. You got to go to work at a certain time, five or 10 hours a week. This is technically included, but I'm not talking about this. I would guess that if I, if we cut off all the training, most of you, if not all of you, maybe you've only been here a couple of days, but you could go right back to old school and just learn from your mentor. You could watch the 10 step program and go to the events and you would learn how to sell this information. <clears throat> if you did this and you committed to 10 hours a week of money-making activities, MMAs, I learned something new, which are Thursday nights, you don't miss Thursday night, the super Saturday once a month. And, and you, the rest of the time you do marketing. You literally get on the phone and you bang the phones because that's your job. You're a call salesperson. You're an appointment setter, whatever the heck you want to call yourself, right? And then you study the follow-up or you study the funding options and you read a book like Michael has about overcoming objections or, you know, sales concepts or whatever it is or mindset of your own. And you do a couple things like that a week and you make this your part-time job. You will make more money in a part-time job than you ever have. But none of us commit to that. It's just a fact. We literally don't believe that if we spent 10 hours a week, every day, every week, making, making money, making activities, not these trainings, not the study groups, not all the, not going to a property tour that we don't need to be without it, without it, without a pro, a, you know, sitting there on a zoom at a property tour that someone else is doing because you want to no, and not working on doing a fix and flip and not trying to find a deal, right? If you did this, you would make extra money. You would pay off your debt. And next year, you'd be in the position to buy a property, right? And you'd be able to buy it under market. And I'm not talking about flipping it. I'm talking about holding it. And you would start to create wealth. And you could create a five-year wealth cycle. In five years, you could have 10, 20, 30 rentals, more. And then when you buy them low and the market goes up, I'm selling like four assets right now that I've acquired over the last, I should say we, my wife and I, between three and four assets that we've acquired over the last I'm going to finish with this. Over the last six years, the market is so high, it's ridiculous. I'm going to limit some of the, the, the iffy, you know, they make a couple hundred bucks a month and, you know, I've been paying down the mortgage. Where I could, I'm going to be able to pay off my RV, right, with one of them. I'm going to be able to buy twice the house in Florida or the East Coast that I have in California with a dock. And, a, and an enclosed in swimming pool and Airbnb the crap for 400 a night, not 250 a night. Like it's unbelievable, right? But I'm selling stuff at the high, buy low, sell high. That's what you do. I'm not going to sell everything, but I'm going to be able to pay down my, my house that we bought that was upside down $300,000. By the time I sell all these assets and close on these next two properties, it's paid off $417,000 free line of credit. Okay. On a house that was $300,000 upside down 10 years ago but I was able to keep it. Why? i studied the education and learned it from Renatus. I didn't sell the house in a short sale or foreclosure or bankruptcy. I kept it. I negotiated off the second mortgage. I rented the place out and paid it down. 
Then I used the velocity banking. I decided to get a first position line. When I say I, we decided to get a first position line of credit on the thing. We bought this house with a hundred grand of that line of credit, right? This has 350,000. You guys, you don't ever have to do a fix and flip to do any of those things. That is the freaking wealth cycle that we're going to dive into next week. You guys, this, this income opportunity, if you would just give a crap about it and like actually believe in it, and you actually did a money-making activity, you actually took some sort of semi-massive action, any massive action more than what you're doing today, and every one of us, me included, do you know how many things I did yesterday that had nothing to do with marketing that I literally didn't have to do? That I could have taken one time and made a phone call yesterday? So finally I forced myself and I was on Facebook with three different prospects right now that are warm market, that are legit, have the money, and want this education, and I'm booked somebody to profits. I never even would have thought of that. I don't even, so I'm going to go watch the profits today at noon. Like it's crazy what happens when you focus on something and you commit to it. And cause I'm, I can't, I cannot fail. I cannot believe be, I cannot be below $150,000 this year. If I got to have another $70,000 a month and so be it, I've got to kick my butt. I have re-reached out to all my team members. You guys, you got this, you guys. Okay. I'm over time. This is so cool. <laughs> Not stupid though. Thank you, Sue. Um, I hope this makes sense, you guys. Uh, next week, remind me, and I will actually make some notes about the wealth cycle. And um, if you do anything this week, um, you know, Dane is going to be amazing. Wanda pours it from the heart on Thursday. You know, she's short and sweet to the point. Michael set the stage yesterday, I think, in, in creating the value of what we have here and reminding you of that. And, and, and there is no question that we can preach, but the, the bottom line is um, take a look at yourself and just decide what your commitment level is to this and, and make a damn, a darn goal, a 30 day goal, 60 day goal. And how many sales you want to have, look at your, where you're at in your five-star qualification, what percentage of the, of the CV you're going to make. And, and you know what, and then, and then just, um, just, so I, I texted one of, I'm doing this incentive. One of my incentives is a thousand dollar cost Costco gas cash card, right? The other day I bought, we bought this RV. We're still waiting to pick it up. It's brand new. So. And I'm going shopping and we spent a thousand dollars in, 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 in an hour. Right. And so for me, like, it's still money. It's still a lot of money, but, but one of my guys, one of my team members is like, wow, a thousand dollar gift card to get food at Costco would just be amazing. Right. So think about what, a $3,500 commission would be if you made your first sale or, or, you know, if you, if you make a, a you know, if you're making 30% of, of, of a $10,000 sale and you make three grand, right. And, and then you make the extra 5% for the 10% for the other. So, you know, your first sale could be 3,500 bucks or 4,500 bucks or $5,000. What would you do with it? Like if they, if you got that extra, you don't change anything else with your world, you're in your business, whatever your at home business is or your main money, or if you're a stay-at-home dad or mom, and what would that mean to your spouse bringing that money in? What would you do with the kids? Like, write it down, what, it, what you do with it. Like, spend it today, and then earn it tomorrow. I don't know. You guys are awesome. Um, Megan reached out to her whole team. Me too. Let's kick it off. Kick off the rust. COVID, you know, COVID 2.0. Who gives a crap? 2.0. Um, you know, F the government 2.0. I don't know, you guys. Let's just have fun. and. Um, Let's have some fun. Like I have, this is for me. I have to have fun again. I have to remember the pop, Bob reminded me yesterday of the power of what we do. And he, he's never wavered. You guys, he doesn't waver on, on his belief and his commitment. Um, we do every day. We do. He does not. And I doubt any of the pack members do. Um, so they probably did and they probably have gone through it, but they're on the pack now because they, they, they decided not to anymore. So that's all we need to do. All right, you guys. Uh, yeah, we're in such a peel. You've been awesome. Thanks so much for that. Wanda, thank you for your um, super cool comments. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Now, I'm just going to check one thing. Um, so, uh, Nancy, were you talking to me privately? Could you let me know? Or, or did you? Um, I don't know, because these were sent to me privately, and I don't know if you want me to answer them or not. Um, so, I guess I'd have to text them. Uh, let me know. Let me see. Did you type in the thing, Nancy? You guys, I'm just checking. Uh, or did you mean to send it to me privately or maybe you meant, okay, I'll call you. Perfect, Nancy. 
let me uh, let me write this down. Uh, two. Oh yeah, I'm gonna give you guys my number. Two two four. All right. Awesome, Nancy. I'm gonna call you. Okay. Oh, you didn't mean to send them to me privately. Okay, cool. So uh, the profits, just so you guys know, I, Michael does record them. I don't know where to get them from. Michael Keeley might. He probably, you know, maybe if you text him or call him or email him or send him a Facebook message, he will send you the profits recording. They are on the Facebook page. I believe oh, they are them live. Each on week. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you have it. I didn't even know that. I love it. Great comments, Nancy. I'm just reading. You guys are awesome. All right. Funding webinar. You guys, this is great. Great, great. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, great interaction. Great contribution. And uh, everything. I just love you guys. This, uh, you guys, just thinking about this. Michael inspired me, and you guys inspire me. And if I don't, if I don't bring quality to this thing, it's just a waste of our time. And I don't want to waste your time because I know how. I know you guys are committed to this, and I know you guys care about this, and I know you guys want this. And so I got to do everything I can to, uh, you know, to help you. And and the only reason I'm at I'm at, you know, fifty grand, and you're at whatever you're at, if I'm at ahead of you at all, is. Uh, is two things, right? I have a, I have a little, I've been doing a little bit longer. Okay. I've been doing a little bit longer. That's it. I have a little bit more experience putting in an order and talking to people. That's it. And then number two is I'm probably talking to a few more people than you, but Nate Lambert and Dane Clark and Michael Huggins are talking to more people than I am. Okay. So they're making more money because they're talking to more people and that's it. This is the decision. I may be doing more real estate, but they're making more money. <laughs> so you guys have a choice. Oh, Kim, you are beautiful. All right, Pete, you're welcome, brother. Nancy, you're welcome. Alvin, Autumn, everybody, Tamara. Oh, my God, tomorrow's so cool. Uh, you guys, it's so cool to see you guys. Wanda, thank you so much for your comments. Keely, you've been amazing as always. Brian, brother, let's go to work. Call me today, brother. Let's, let's call somebody. Let's, or let's set a script, whatever you want to do. Megan, keep up the amazing work you do in, in, the, in the Midwest over there, you know, keeping the, the Great Lakes states going. Uh, Lorene, nice to see you. Matiana, what a cool name. Great to have you, Erif. Awesome. Good morning to everybody and uh, everybody else, you guys. Keo, Glenn, Melissa, everybody I see on here. Just love you guys. Corey, Corey and Ron, my friends. Uh, just love you guys. Doug and, and Galaxy. I mean, Galaxy and I go way back. <laughs> love you guys and have a great day. I think I put this on there. 760-532-3141. Um, I hope this helped. It helped me. And I uh, look forward to seeing Dane and uh, Wanda the rest of the week. Bring it, you guys. Make it a great day. Make it a great Tuesday. Love you, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. See you tomorrow.